Patu ke toa mari e mea patua pe pe lang lang ia i hau a fio A ko fata apu ia te wawe a koe ni waf O ita mai ba mo e alo Ko lau mari e maat on Tu be mo ke hu faa te ngai fata apu toa pe Ko os fai at me muan Ta nga te te au fai ki toa Ka ata a mua ki nga ke hanga herea mahi no ngufua Te tunga pe i hefaka amu ke mahi no Eh, orang mahu tu orang tunga ini kita ihe ni ah kau ni. Orang mula mula bermu orang tu kau sifat mereka faham apa lagi. Kau mahino, ayo wah mahu inga kau ini. Kau maf, saya biasa ya kau ini. Ayo mahu inga. Orang mea aku hok eh orang tua. Kau orang lepas mahu mahu iya eh tangga ta. Di mana orang maf iwak? And say being see a say neti le ay toa. As you turn here together before God, you choose to turn it together into marriage. Together in commitment to God, you become one. And in your commitment to each other, this oneness is worked out through a lifetime. In marriage, there is no looking back. And there is no looking around. Let me say it again, Muffy. In marriage, there is no looking back. And there was no looking around. You get that? <laughs> Praise God. And in Christ and the following and the fellowship of his community, I'm sorry. There is grace, wisdom, and support. For you to grow and mature together in deeper dimension than you could ever accomplish on your own. So I'd like to read a few scripture and share a word of encouragement to the two of you this afternoon. And I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 13, beginning from verse 1 to verse 8, and I'm going to conclude it with verse 13. And it goes like this. If I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong and a clanking cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can understand mysteries and all knowledges, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And if I give all my all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love I gain nothing love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it is not rude it is not self-seeking it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs and I mean it keeps no record of wrong Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. In verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatness of them all is love. I want to use it as, as, as topic, uh, a part of a song or a theme of a song that was written by one of our well-known gospel singer from the South Pacific that happened to be Esther King from Fiji. One of his songs is titled, Love is the key to everything you do, but Jesus is the source of it all. Let me say it again. Love is the key to everything you do, but Jesus is the source of it all. So if you ask, if you ask me, how do I think that love is important? And why do I think that love is the key to everything we do? My answer to that one is very simple. Because God himself is love. And love is God. And according to 1 John 4, verse 7 and verse 8, it says, 
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. But he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So if you ask me, why do I think that love is so important? And why do I think that love is the key for everything we do? It is all because that God is love. And love is God. Our answer goes like this, because the scripture says, without love I am nothing. And without love I gain nothing. According to the scripture that I have read earlier. If you keep on asking me, well, how, why do you think that love is so important? And why do I think that love is the key to everything I do? Well, the answer it says, because love began with God, and we should always begin this love in us with Jesus. A love that is called agape love, and it means unconditional love. When I heard that uh, Muffy and Benny are planning to get married, I, I share with the parents and I ask them, I want to see if I can have time with them, take them out for dinner and sit down with them and see what I can do, trying to do the best as a servant of God, giving them advice and trying to help them, so that uh, when we put the two into one, we want to be sure that no devil in hell will break it. So that moment came true last week. Muffy called me and book dinner so that we can go and sit down. And we went there. One of the most reasons why we do that, we want to be sure the most important purpose of why we bring them, because we want to be sure that the best for them is to invite Jesus first into their lives. So, when I came, the scripture that was in my heart is John chapter 2. Talk about the well-known story that almost all of us Christians know. It's about the wedding in Cana in Galilee. Great story. And I looked at them and I said, on the 25th of August this year, or this coming Sunday, we're just about ready to begin a story of your family. But I want to bring this story to help out so that your story will be a very great one. I know that all of us, when we look at that story, we all have our own idea of what's the most important part of the story. And I know that most of us, we say, well, most important part of this story is in this chapter and this very scripture, we found the first miracle that Jesus ever performed, according to John. Some of us might say, well, in this scripture, it really shows us something that had never happened before or after. Someone somewhere changed the water into wine. I mean, when we hear those kind of stories, it shocks us. How can that happen? But it's right on that chapter. But every time I read this, this scripture, what I think is, is the most important to me is found in verse 2. It says there, And the disciples and Jesus was invited to the wedding. And the disciples and Jesus was invited to the wedding. I believe, to me, I look at it as the most important part of the story. So I shared with them when they came, and I told Muffy, Danny, there's something that I want you to make as the most important part of your story that we're about to begin. Invite Jesus into your wedding. But first of all, you have to invite Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus into your family. Invite Jesus into your wedding. That's why we end up on a Sunday. They want to be sure that everything will do according to Jesus' will. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
I wish that the story that we're about to witness today will be also our story. If you want the story of your life or your family or your church to be a great story, invite Jesus first. Just imagine if Jesus was not in the wedding in Cana and Galilee. There won't be anything that changed water into wine. There won't be anything that a first miracle that Jesus ever performed. Not in that very scripture. But I want to encourage the new couple today. Always, and I mean always, invite Jesus to be the center of your life, your family. We're here today to witness that you have invited him to be the center of this wedding. And we're expecting a good one. So I want to conclude with this. We should love others the way God loved us. Where did you find it at? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. For whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Also Paul testified in Romans 5, verse 8. God showed us his, showed us his love in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in John 15, verse 13, Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Muffy, you can all do that if you invite Jesus first. Sapiencia, so you can all do everything is possible if you just invite Jesus first. So after sharing the heart of love with you, Muffy and Bien, and and Bien Mr. Timothy Mafivaka, will you take Saibian Sia Senetile Atoa to be your wedded wife, to cherish her and to live with her under God's holy ordinance? Will you pledge your loyalty to her and promise to love her, to honor, comfort, and keep her in sickness and in health, in prosperity and in adversity, and keep yourself unto her only? So long as you both shall live, if your answer is yes, then you may respond by saying, I will. I think you need to say it a little louder. <laughs> if your answer is yes, then you must respond by saying, I will. will. Alright. Mori, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Saibian Sia, Senetile Atoa. Will you take Timote Mafivaka to be your wedded husband? to cherish him and to live with him under God's holy ordinance. Will you pledge your loyalty to, to him and promise to love <coughs> from this day forward, to heaven to hold from this day forward, for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, and keep yourself Unto him only, so long as you both shall live. If the answer is yes, then you may say, I will. Praise God. Amen. So this time, Muffy, will you take Sabian Sia's hands and look to her in the eyes and repeat these words of covenant after me, please. Come, come to the front. Come in here. I Timote Mafivaka Take you Saibian Sias and Etile Aitoa To be my wedded wife To have and to hold From this day forward For better or for worse For richer or for poorer In sickness and in health To love and to cherish Till death do us part and with God as my witness, I pledge my love to you. So now, Sabian Sia, will you take Muffy's hands, look to him in the eyes, and repeat these words of covenant after me, please. I, Sabian Sia Senetile Atoa, take you, Timote Muffy Vaka, 
to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. And with God as my witness, I pledge my love to you. Praise God. This time, I would ask to please ring the rings. So, Muffy, what token do you bring? As a pledge that you will faithfully perform these vows. Yes, sir. Sweet. As a token of your love and of your deep desire to be forever united in heart and soul, Timote Mafivaka, you may now place the ring on the finger of your bride and repeat these words after me, please. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and my faithfulness to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Saipian Sia, what token do you bring as a pledge that you will faithfully perform these vows? Amen. Saipian Sia, as a token of your love and of your deep desire to be forever united in heart and soul. Saipiencia and Senetile Aitoa, you may now place the ring on the finger of your groom and repeat these words after me, please. Timote Mafivaka, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and my faithfulness to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This time I'd like to ask, please, all the pastors that are here, please come forward. It's time for us to give blessings to the new couple and dedicate them unto the Lord. So I'm going to ask all the pastors in here, please. This is one of the May I ask everyone to please stand. ก็ได้ครับเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเ
Otoa Mafi Mafi. Of the Aiki. Kavau Tamai Tangata Afiona. Hallelujah. Like a put here Afiona, I win my family to Muma. I lot of Hapaya to Hova Queen. Io Aiki. Mohapaya to Afiona. I found family for Jesus. Jesus. Coin Marie. Hallelujah. 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 The four to two. The Palanico to Afiona. The Mohapa for a four. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I offer Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You may face the people. Amen. As Timothy Mafi Waka and Sibian Sia Senate have joined together in holy marriage and have declared the same before God in the presence of his people. I am proud to pronounce to you for the very first time this couple as husband and wife. So, Timote Mafivaka, you may now kiss your bride. Very much, Pastor Mahalo, for me. I want to think of a motor when I can pay it on my money, Pastor Ola. So ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time, it's a great honor for me as his servant to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Timote Mafi and Sibiencia Seneti Vaca in Jesus' wonderful name. Let's all give our hands to the Lord. Amen. Let's start it. Let's pray. Five members pass the year over here. 